Oh, hello. Welcome back to Speakeasy. I am still, don't ever look in my camera. I am still what? Paul F. Tompkins. My guest today is fresh as paint. He is an actor, writer, producer, director, and sometime comedian even. Please say hello to Bob Odenkirk. Oh, How do you do shake your Do one head? thing well. That's what I would say to that guy. What are you going to focus on? I can't. Uh, You're all over I the could map have, here, I would have done it years ago. What, what do you think it is? What do you think? Why can't you pick a thing? I'm not that good at anything. So you're a jack of all trades, but uh, in terms of being a of master, oh, oh, master of none. None. Oh. Yeah. Why am I talking to I you? I wish I was a jack of mastering things. Then I would eventually master something. Think about that. Bob, we're off and running. You and I know Everyone's each other. Everyone's like, slow down. This is the internet. It's breakneck pace. Ugh, people with their smart devices and their... What's next, Bob? Little right? tiny microwave ovens that you carry around. You ask me, I'm telling you. Well, look, let's cut the horseshit. <laughs> you and I know each other. Let's start we, the horseshit. We can't, for, <laughs> let's cut the horseshit by starting some horseshit. Yeah. We know each other. We worked together many years ago. Did we? Yes, yeah. we did. I'll, let me refresh your yeah, memory. Yeah. Vaguely. <laughs> this looks familiar, right? Yeah. Oh. We worked on. <laughs> Bottom half. <laughs> We worked on Mr. Show with Bob and David. This was a show yeah, you mm -hmm. and David Cross created and hosted. Right. For four years on HBO. Yes. I was a writer and performer on that yes. show. You gave me my Fantastic. first Brig Bake, Bob. Did I? The, what did yeah, I say? Yeah, I'm not going to call you on that. Did I say Brig Bake? Yes. Yes. I, it was a Navy jail in which I <laughs> made brig, cakes. A Brig. It was a Brig Bake. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and since then, it's become a popular game show <laughs> on television. So. I, We yes. know each other. You have done, yes. since Mr. Show, a groundbreaking sketch comedy program. You, <laughs> that little head tilt that says, not for me to say. Well, breaking ground, <laughs> is that a good thing? Sometimes when they break ground, it's for a beautiful high rise that takes America into the next century. Sometimes it's for a grave. Has anyone combined those things? A giant high rise that's that is- full of graves? <laughs> <laughs> no, but. There you go. What? See how ideas come just out of the ether when you're oh, drinking? I, I would love to. By the way, uh -huh. these are real drinks, but only slightly. It's just enough. Just mm -hmm. enough so you get the idea. It's good. It's good. I don't because wanna... you drove a school bus here, right? I did. The yeah. kids are waiting. Yeah. I'll get them home. It'll all be good. That's right. Kids oh. will have a happier <laughs> bus driver. <laughs> Because you know how drunks, how happy they are. They're the happiest They're people They're so in the world. happy. You envy their happiness. They're just walking around singing and staggering. <laughs> Bubbles coming out of their heads. It's a great thing. It's now a you, gift. Let's, let's talk about this book. Oh, because sure. We'll talk about the book. You and David wrote some screenplays. Mm -hmm. They were not produced. No, and nor will they ever be. And so you've collected them yes. into this book. Because I believe that's where the film business is headed. Towards print? Back into books. That's right. Everything goes in circles, that's Paul. Right. And you'll just go to your cinema and... Get a book and go in with everyone else and you'll all sit and read. Will we all be on the same page at the same yes, time? Yes, there'll be a bing, turn the page. A little tone. What if you're and behind, what happens? Boy, I don't know. Uh, we is haven't worked it, that out yet. Is it like when you're with like your parents at the movies Ugh. and then it's like, what did he say? Why is he oh, mad at the him? The whole time, that's right. Why do we still have old people, do you think? Oh, Obama. He I blame needs... Obama. This is a book of my screenplays. Can we talk about it yes. honestly? It's called David Hollywood Cross Said No. And Brian Posehn and I wrote this. Mm -hmm. It's very Mr. Showy. Mm -hmm. You read it for I the did. audio book? That's right. There's also an audio version that's coming out. Yeah. A lot of the old Mr. Show gang got yeah. together. Mm -hmm. We put our differences aside. You had the sign that says, right. check your ego from no. over a dozen years no, ago no, at the no. door. It said, check your coat at the door. Oh. I know you thought it said ego, but if you didn't notice, everyone else had their ego with them. You were the only one who kept your coat on. <sighs> And I left my ego, ego at the door. the door. Big mistake. I was too hot in that room and I was treated like garbage. Yeah. Well, everyone else had their egos warming yeah. them up. Yeah, yeah. Did you enjoy reading it? Yes, I did. Good. It was a lot of fun. One of the scripts I had read many years ago, we uh -huh. did a table read of that script. I remember right. that. And I, uh, it was a sufficiently long amount of time that it was practically brand new to me again. And I enjoyed it all over again. It was Great. like I had been hypnotized oh, to forget awesome. that script. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. And it was fun to, to reunite with everybody and, you know, that crazy group of people. It's so great that you did it. And everyone was so generous with their time. It was amazing. We couldn't believe that we got everyone and that they came back. If somebody said, okay, now we're reconsidering this, we'll make one of these screenplays, would you be up for that? Or would Absolutely. You be like We'd love to do it. We'd, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think that 
the, it's weird, the one screenplay, the Hooray for America one is kind of, it's like the tighter story and all, but it's so obscure and so Mr. Show, obsessy, mm -hmm. sarcastic about culture. Whereas the sketch movie, I think would potentially make more people happy and mm -hmm. work for a bigger audience. But I, I don't know, I don't think anybody would do what, it. How long had it been since you had we, we hadn't stuff. looked at these in years, I don't know. I mean, they were kind of written around the time Mr. Show ended. Mm -hmm. Seven or eight years, at least, mm -hmm. maybe 10. David was the one who said, let's, we can, we can get them published. I mean, we weren't even talking about them. I don't know, we were talking about doing a tour mm -hmm. just to do it for fun. We've always talked about it, but I've had, you know, I have these two damned kids. And David has nothing. Like nothing. That free to roam. Every morning he wakes up and goes, where in the world do I want to go yeah. and do comedy? Yeah. Goes to England and shoots a TV series? Yeah, at a moment's the notice. The unstoppable whatever his name is? Mr. Jenkins? Flagstaff? Yeah, the unstoppable Mr. Flagstaff. Yeah. And I've had these kids weighing me down, slowing me down. They are demanding of everything. Ugh. They want your time, they want you your attention. My kids are still babies. No, after they all They have time? never aged. But these kids, surely, they're almost teenagers by now. I know. You're saying they're still infants? Oh, yeah. They're still infants. Little babies. Crawling, got, at least? No, no. Well, no. Not even crawling? Well, one of them crawled, but he didn't want me to see it. But you caught him? Oh, I caught him. On tape. And did Put you, up cameras everywhere. Did you show him the tape? And oh, say, yeah. What, what was his response? You better feed me or I'll sue you. Oh, they, they know when they got something going. Yeah. Good. Well, scripture says, how sharper than a serpent's tooth to have a litigious child. Yeah, which scripture is that again? Mm. L. Ron Hubbard, uh, Warriors of Planet Deut Xenon? It's Deuteridovicus. Oh, Deuteridovicus. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, he was good. You're... How about those Dead Sea Scrolls, huh? Oh, we just talked about them. Right. We just Every show about you talk about, I'm sorry. I know, it's it's like, it's a, a topic we had to retire after a while because it cut came this up out. so much. Believe me, off camera, I could talk about Dead Sea Scrolls oh. uh, until they're alive again. <laughs> Do you have your inhaler? I don't. <laughs> you shouldn't talk about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Shouldn't. Then, please. Now, you, you were talking about a tour. Would this be you and just you and David? Uh, I, in September, me and David Cross and Brian Posehn are going to tour some theaters all around America. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do stand-up and sketches. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in two years, a Mr. Show reunion. Oh, what really? Do you think? I think it's yeah, going it to happen. It could be fun. 20 years. Oh my God. For yeah. Really? 20 years since we started the show. we got to cut this part out. Your kids did not know that you were a performer. Well, and then they found it some out people would say I'm not. If you were to read Deadline Hollywood, you'd find out there's a lot of adults who don't think I'm a performer. <laughs> Told ya. How seriously should I take internet comments? Oh, 100% seriously. What do you mean? Uh, they're all very thoughtful, thoughtfully written. I know that. You understand the democracy of the internet. Well, not really. Explain oh. it to me. Everyone has a voice. Right. Everyone's voice is equally valid. Right. You must take those comments seriously. Every one of them. Every one of them. Oh my God. Well, I should quit the business. I should have quit months ago. But then I'm sure there's also people who have said, you're a genius and you should be on everything. Yes, that's right. They're both right because of the democracy of the internet. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Now I understand. Hey, now I didn't. It makes perfect I sense. I didn't invent it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It's just there. <laughs> My kids uh, did not really know what I did because everything I've done is for kind of an adult audience. It's filthy. Mr. Show, Breaking Bad, is stuff mm. that I, well, you wouldn't show to a little kid, right? right? Your son's very interested in comedy. My son loves comedy, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Even though, like I said, for years didn't know what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though, you know, my wife, who's a manager of very good, excellent comic actors yes. and actresses, uh, so there's a certain amount of talk about show business in the house. You can't help but hear a little bit of like, the B.O. was this box office. Someone ankled the sked. Someone ankled this sked or that sked. Uh, at, at around seven years old, he said to me, uh, Dad, when I grow up, I'm not going into comedy. I go, why? It's too much work. And I had not been working hard. I'd been helping at the house. Right. The reason he said that is because like, Every two weeks, I would do a stand-up night just to stay alive in my brain. And that was annoying. That pissed him off because I like would not leave. Even, not, not even like a paying gig, but you would just go try no, material somewhere. I just do UCB somewhere. for right. 10 minutes. And it was like, I'm not going to be here tonight. And, you know, I'm going to go. Good night. You go to bed while I'm gone. It's like cats in the cradle. And I would say to him, like, yes. <laughs> do you know real fathers work. They actually work. Real jobs. You don't see them. When you're 28, you finally sit down with him because he retires. Right. And you have lunch, and it's sad, and you go to Ponderosa for lunch. 
at a, at a buffet. Yeah, restaurant. but anyways, he loves, my son loves comedy. My daughter is a very intelligent uh, entertainment uh, watcher. She mm -hmm. watches movies and really pays attention to story, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you think she'll be a writer? Oh, I think she could be a writer or work as a producer, a studio person. I mean, it's funny because growing up, uh, showbiz was so weird for me and probably for you too. I'm from Naperville, Illinois, and there's nobody related into the business at all yeah. in my family. So the idea of doing it was so weird and really took me years and years to even go, this is what I do, What? where do I want to go with it? Like it was so like, I don't know if anyone would ever give me a job doing this. I love doing it. I'm gonna do it every day. I'm gonna to try to get work doing it. But I, I remember meeting Ben Stiller and seeing how he thought about the business and how much he planned and thought about a, a bigger career than he had and, and becoming someone important. And for me, that even thinking about that was like, oh wow, yeah, I guess if you're gonna do it, you should think about where you wanna go with it. But for me, it was just like, if someone will someday pay me for this, right. that will be good enough. Yeah, it's, it's as much as you can imagine. Oh, it's like, yeah. that's crazy just to think that. And you you tell no... your family, I'm gonna write sketches, and they're like, do they pay you to do that one day? But you know the crazy thing is people still treat it like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've had people say about Breaking Bad, well that's great, you know, that might lead to something. I think a lot of people assume your, the only goal of anyone who gets into show business is global superstardom. Right, is Tom if, Cruise. Yeah, and you're if not, you're not that, then you must feel like a failure. And you're trying to become that still. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So like getting this amazing part on this amazing show, like, oh, it's too bad he's not the star of the show. But I'm sure there's somebody saying that to Brian Cranston. Right, know, like, like, oh, is it on Channel 4? No, yeah. it's on cable. Like, and, uh, you'll get him next you'll time. You'll get there. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> you keep trying. Now, was this, was this a thing that sort of came to you out of nowhere, seemingly? Yes, absolutely. Because Vince Gilligan was a fan of Mr. Show. Mr. Show, which we, I didn't know for a while because I didn't want to test the waters. <laughs> I didn't want to know how I got this incredible lottery ticket that I found. Right. I just was going to cash it in and keep my mouth shut. And was it an audition or it was, this is your part? No audition. This was written for you. I don't know if it was written for me, but no auditioning. Right. Phone call from my agent. They're going to offer you a part on a show called Breaking Bad. Don't say no. And at the time, I was not saying no to anything because <laughs> I was enjoying any work that I got. I was doing a lot of development and anything where I got to act and actually do something instead of write it and have people say no right. was awesome. But there's your agent with the cigar. Whatever Listen. You don't say no. I know you're gonna say no. Don't say no this time. Right, yeah. So uh, I get a phone, first I got a phone call from Vince. The guy's gonna call you Vince Gilligan. He's the writer of the show, he's great. And he calls me and I go, so what is it? He goes, he's a lawyer, he's a sleazy lawyer. And I go, I can do that, yeah. Mm. And he goes, his name's Saul Goodman. I go, all right. He keeps talking, I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not Jewish. And I'm thinking, there's a lot of Jewish actors. There's a few Jewish actors. There's like a dozen now. There's like maybe 13. Baker's dozen. Right. So, you know, give one, they should get this role. He goes, well, the guy's not Jewish. He just took that name because he felt he should appear Jewish because he'll the homeboys and the gangsters will think that that's a good lawyer right. if he's got a Jewish name. So he's actually Irish, and I go, great, I'm half Irish, I can do it. Right. So he offers it to me, and I get the script, and it's this great script, and I haven't watched the show yet. I called a friend. I, I was going to call a bunch of people. This is the it was second, the second season. season. Right? Yeah. The second season had started, but the first season was only seven episodes mm -hmm. because of the writer's strike. It got abbreviated, and you know the show wasn't an immediate hit. And it was really cool of AMC uh, to keep the show going because it took a while to develop its audience, you know? So it was at the end of the second season, my character enters. So the first part of the season was already playing on, on TV. Anyhow, Vince calls me. We talk about it. It sounds great. I get the script. It's a lot of, like, long passages of dialogue. And we do comedy. And comedy, usually, you say two lines. The other person says two lines. Yeah. And then you get the blue pages, and it's one line. Right. You know, I mean, comedy is yeah. brief and fast. And so I'm looking at this dialogue, and I'm thinking, well, that's going to be one line. I'm going to say, I can't help you today. Right. Instead of, uh, I can, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Saul is always talking a mile a minute. And um, I'm waiting to memorize it to get the blue pages because I'm like, I'm not going to memorize all this stuff. They're not going to use it. What's the point? But I get the script and it's like the blue pages have like one word is changed. <laughs> like th Wednesday is Thursday. Right. So whatever, I start learning it. And then I, that's when I started to realize like that the dialogue was not just jibber jabber. Like the character was trying to manipulate the people through his arguments mm -hmm. that he was making. It was fun and amazing to do. And 
You know, the tone was completely different from anything I've done, although Larry Sanders, you know, was kind of seriously played. Mm -hmm. It was just an amazing experience, Paul. I mean, I, I, you've done, you did a Soderbergh film, right? Oh, yeah. I did, what was that I movie? Did like, it's called The Informant. I yeah. did like three lines in that movie. And it was very exciting to be there. Yeah. But, you know, nobody saw it, but. <laughs> I saw it, I thought it was great. Oh, well then I was wrong. One person. One person is. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it is seldom that you get to step outside of your own world and do something like this. And this is certainly like hitting the jackpot with such a great yeah, part on such a great show. Yeah. I, I know that people ask a lot, or people talk, speculate a lot about the idea of a spinoff because mm -hmm. that's because Breaking Bad's not going to run forever. Right. They're going to wrap up the story probably that's pretty right. soon. Absolutely. Is the that next, something? There's eight left. There you go. Would Starting you, in August. Would is that something you would do? Absolutely. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah. In a minute, I'd do it in a minute. Is it going to happen? Uh, I don't know. You know, Vince Gilligan has a genuinely has a serious idea of pl mm -hmm. a, a, a sort of guiding principle for it. Right. And uh, I think he's genuine about wanting to explore it, but. He's so dedicated to Breaking Bad, and he's doing it right now. They're cutting, I think, the third episode of this final eight. So he's in the middle of it. So after it's done, he'll take some time, and he'll think about it. And if he chooses to do it, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. I'd be knocked out to do it. I mean, I, I can't believe I got to do it at all. So that's right. enough. But I'm not like an actor who waits around for parts. I mean, you know me. I that's a different try life. to generate stuff yeah. of my own every yeah, yeah. day. Um, and if I was, I'd probably be much more eager for that to move forward or whatever. Right. But for me, at the age I'm at and with what I've done, getting to show up on a set with a great script and a really rich character and, and have everyone else worry about the lighting and the budget and, right. and just to focus just on playing this guy was such a vacation, it's just the greatest. It, you know, if somebody said to me, look, just put aside all your genius projects, and the genius is sarcastic, uh, and just play this character, right. you know how people talk to me, <laughs> I would be thrilled to do it, right. and I would immerse myself in it. Well, now, speaking of creating your own stuff, you uh, are producing a show with a, a very funny uh, comedy group here in yeah. Los Angeles called The Birthday Boys. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a show for IFC? That's right, it's for IFC, The Birthday Boys. T tell me about this, Bob. Well, How you know, you I, I can't seem to get away from sketch comedy, uh, Saturday Night Live and, uh, and Mr. Show. And uh, I helped with Tim and Eric Awesome Show, but I mm -hmm. just, oh, you know, just gave them some pointers, that's all but it's all them otherwise. But I've just always been around sketch comedy and I love it. I really do love it from when I was a kid. It's my favorite kind of uh, thing to write mm -hmm. and I think it makes me laugh harder than almost any other kind of comedy. And so I saw these guys, the birthday boys, and they are very funny and they kind of have a voice mm -hmm. that they've developed as a group. So it's, we, we made a show and we shot a pilot for IFC and they picked it up for 10, so it's gonna come on in October. When did you first see The Birthday Boys? My wife uh, does a benefit show, she produces a benefit show every New Year's weekend called The Not Inappropriate Show. Mm -hmm. And it's sketches from all around town. As a manager, she sees all these different sketches at the Groundlings and at UCB in Second City. And she gets the ones that kids could watch that aren't crude, yes, and she yes, puts yes. them together. And uh, we do it like twice on that weekend and people can bring their uh, kids, not, it's not for five-year-olds, but right. for 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds. And you go see a show and we raise money for 826 LA. Mm -hmm. And the birthday boys just tend to do really loony stuff that mm -hmm. isn't crude. Their, yeah, their sensibility is very, it's, it's just silly and there's something that's very, joyful about them. Yeah, you know, very likable guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to me and David Cross. <laughs> <laughs> you have a film that's going to the Cannes Film Festival yes. this year. Uh, it's called Nebraska. Well, you can say I have a film. I'm in a film that's going there. I, I, it's Alexander Payne's movie, right. Nebraska. <laughs> I <I'll> think <laughs> my movie is <laughs> the con. So you, you are a part of a, uh, an amazing I, ensemble. An amazing movie. ensemble, another stroke of luck. Mm. Who else is in it? Bruce Stern and Will Forte. And uh, it was such a ex wonderful experience. It was really a, a kind of a small story and it, it's very sweet and sad and funny. Mm. But the script was so little and minor key, you know? And even going to do it, I was kind of like, well, I hope this is like 
rich enough. You know, it's so, so small, but you know, whatever, I'll show up. <laughs> Since they're flying me out. I'll show up. <laughs> but man, it was great to shoot. It was so great. It was one of those things where, like Breaking Bad or Mr. Show, where you're shooting it and you're going like, are we really allowed to make something so great, so cool? You know what I mean? Yeah, that it feeling feels good of like while it's happening. Somebody should step in here and say, you can't. No, it has to be kind of shitty. Right. You know, it's too great. It feels too great. Yeah. And it really kind of had, most movies are such montages. Each scene doesn't really, it, it maybe strikes one note and then you put it all together. Maybe it hangs together or not. But this thing, Every scene had so many different tones in it and sort of had everything. It had comedy and pathos and it sort of was worth watching, like every scene. And Bruce Dern is unbelievable in it. He's so good and Forte's fantastic and great in this role. And, and I'm told, because I haven't seen it, that it turned out really well. Right. So I'm really excited about that film. Was it challenging? Because it, there you know, are the, all these, because in, yeah. in Alexander Payne movies, they, they there are a lot of different uh, emotions going on. There's yeah. a lot of different tones that are set in all of his films. For you as an actor, was it the most that you had, do you feel it's the most you had to stretch? No, I think Breaking Bad has pushed me farther. But I don't know, Paul, I, I think doing Breaking Bad in like Nebraska and you know, some, almost every year comedy people do some drama and people are always like, what the hell? Right. How the heck did they do that? <laughs> right. But you know, a lot of comedy is about commitment. Mm -hmm. It's about total commitment a lot of times to something just ludicrous. Mm -hmm. You know, so dramatic acting is maybe like, you know, it's like uh, you have to dial it in a little, but it's also about commitment. It's just about believing in whatever the circumstances are of your character, what they want and where they're at. Mm -hmm. So I always see it as a similar thing. I'm, you know, I feel like all of us who did Mr. Show could do dramatic stuff and, and deliver on it. You didn't feel like, oh man, this is outside of, this is outside of my, my scope no. of experience. Actually, you know, the truth is, in a lot of ways, I feel like for me as a performer, that's actually more my speed mm -hmm. than sketch comedy. Right. I did Second City with Chris Farley, and obviously Mr. Show with David Cross, and standing next to those people doing sketch comedy, I'm always thinking, if I was in the audience, I'd be watching him, not me, <laughs> because that guy's just Funny, his right. energy is funny. Everything he's presenting is so much fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Whereas over here is this kind of mixed energy, white guy, he's, got, he's kind of angry. He's doing comedy, he's kind of peeved. And he's, you know, it's too much going on, man. Simplify it and be likable for a second. Whereas these other, these dramatic roles, I mean, they demand that. You mm -hmm. should kind of watch it and you know, you understand the character, but always be looking for what other motives might they have and where are they going and, you know, so I feel like in a weird way, it's where I've always belonged as, an, as a performer, but I just, my natural, I'm so entertained by sketch comedy, mm -hmm. I just naturally gravitated towards that. Do you feel that Breaking Bad opened that up for you though, in a way that, that perhaps you would have been more daunted by it before that uh, Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Breaking Bad was a big, role and it was a real ch challenge to me to mm -hmm. take that script and go I have to deliver on so much here right and and these people are already kicking ass mm -hmm. and working at this high level and I have to fit in and not ruin this thing <laughs> really that's it's like I better not ruin this awesome thing people can say I barely remember you in it that's fine <laughs> at least I didn't ruin it what a wonderful <laughs> epitaph that would be at least i didn't ruin it can, can you say like, to, what more could you hope for to go out of this mortal coil right say, at least i didn't ruin it for everybody else <laughs> bob odenkirk all right thank you so much for being here that is it for this edition of speakeasy please join me again next time when my guest will be a different person honest to god though if the next episode you're still sitting here yeah. uh, it'll make me a liar you'll look bad you have to get out of here <laughs> if bob they will murder me this damned internet. I know. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check back every Monday to see who I interview next. And for more info about Speakeasy, visit MadeMan.com.